Today we're going to learn how to discover vulnerabilities on an exploited computer on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. After a hacker gains access to a compromised computer, the first thing they're going to do is escalate their privileges. If a hacker is able to get root access to a computer, they're going to have complete control over the computer. One way they might do this is using Linux Exploit Suggester, which returns a list of known vulnerabilities that a given Linux kernel is susceptible to. To use this tool, the hacker is either going to need physical access to the computer, or more likely, a remote terminal, which can be gained using command injection or a simple password brute force. All you're going to need to use this tool is an active network connection with the target computer. If you run into any problems with this tutorial, you can check out the article linked in the description. Let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to want to do as the attacker is actually download Linux Exploit Suggester for ourselves and put it on our own computer. So you can go to the Nobyte article and then if you scroll down, here is the GitHub link. And we can just go ahead, oops, <laughs> copy that and then open a terminal and it's just going to download it from the GitHub page. And if we see it, we now have Linux Exploit Suggester 2.pl. Um, and now just to make things easier, we're going to rename that to something a little bit shorter. So we'll call it less two. Yeah. And so now we're going to want to actually get this script onto our target computer so we can run it on their computer and see what the target is susceptible to. So for that, you're going to need an active remote terminal. And for the purposes of this video, I already have one set up. And then this is a, um, a metasploitable virtual machine that I have running on this computer, but this could be any computer on the local network or even a distant network if you have remote access to it. So just to make things clear, this left terminal is representing the attacker's computer and the terminal on the right hand side is representing the target's computer. So we can go ahead and um, set up a HTTP server that the, will use that will go onto the victim computer and connect to it to download this file. So to do that, we're going to set up using simple HTTP server. Oops. And as you can see, it's setting up a HTTP server at this IP at port 8000. And now we're going to want to go on the target computer and do our own wget command. So it's going to be HTTP. Oops, almost forgot one thing. So it's important to note the um, IP, the local IP address of the attacking computer. So we're going to just want to take note of that with 192.168.1.243. So now let's go ahead and set up our HTTP server again. Okay, there we go. And now back to the target computer, we're going to do a wget command. And then now we're going to want to use that local IP address we just found. So 192.168.1.243. And then we're going to remember it's port 8000 and the name of the file is less 2.pl. So basically this is sending an HTTP request to this local IP address, which just so happens to be our um, attacking computer and it's going to download this file, which is the script, which discovers vulnerabilities. So we're going to go ahead and do that and as we can see the file that we want has successfully saved. So from here on out, we can do everything on the target computer. So let's go ahead and put away the attacking computer. So now as we can see, we have this file on our computer. And if we just go ahead and try to run it, we're going to see that we don't have execute privileges. So very easily, we're just going to use chmod and then give ourselves execute privileges for this file. Oops. And so now if we try to run it, It's going to, all it's really doing is looking at this computer, seeing which kernel it is and using a, a public database of exploits that this kernel is susceptible to. So as you can see, it's listing them all out, um, giving the source of um, either a journal that, a cybersecurity journal that um, explains what it is. So, and it also gives the CVE number. So if you go ahead, oops, not going to if you go ahead and copy that and search it, we can see that this exploit allows users to give game privileges using ACPI interpreter tables, whatever that means. But you can do some more researching and that's just one of the 17 possible exploits that this kernel may or may not be susceptible to, but they're all worth trying. So if you want to go ahead, um, 
One useful feature of Linux Exploit Suggester is that it can automatically download scripts to test these exploits. So if we go ahead and run the script again, and then we add um, tack D for download, it's going to give us this query about which um, exploit scripts we actually want to download. So we can download them all, we can download individual exploits. And so let's just go ahead and download the one we're talking about. So we're just going to specify one. And add, so there we go. That one actually doesn't have exploit code. So let's go try, let's just try them all. And as you can see, it's going through the list of all the possible exploits and it's downloading all these exploit scripts to this computer. So we can easily um, apply them to the target computer and hopefully gain root access. And there you go. That's all there is to Linux Exploit Suggester. If you like this tutorial, be sure to check out our website where we have hundreds of free articles and videos, as well as premium paid content like the Ethical Hacking Certification Bundle, which features pen testing with OWASP Zap, WordPress hacking and hardening, and the CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst prep course. Check out the link in the description below. As we just saw, Linux Exploit Suggester can quickly scan a com compromised computer for vulnerabilities and relay that information to an attacker. While this tool can be very useful, it's important to only use it against computers which you have access to use. If you run into any problems with this tutorial, you can check out the article linked in the description. And if you have any ideas for a future video, you can hit me up on Twitter at Nick Gottschall. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.